Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AIT for hooking up with someone else after my BF and I had no official title and split multiple times. I've been in an on and off relationship with a 23 year old guy since September 2023. He has been promising to make me his official girlfriend but hasn't followed through. He told me that I make it hard for him, push him away, said he got me a ring and returned it, mentioned that we don't have a title, brushed off the significance of not making it official accused me of crying about it, and wondered why I couldn't just ask him, even though he promised to ask me out in a nice way. He called me his girlfriend a few times and said he sees us as being together, but when I asked for an official status and an anniversary date, it became confusing. After 10 months of his promises, we broke up on May 2. I told him that we are no longer together, and that I think it's over. I did go back to him despite his initial reluctance to make our relationship official, in early May following our split. However, he had promised me a month earlier that he would ask me to be his girlfriend and suggested that we enjoy our time together without a title. Throughout that month, I repeatedly mentioned that we were not officially together. Despite this, we continued to see each other, go on dates, and be intimate, he assured me that he would make me his girlfriend. On May 27, I made it clear to him that his actions could lead to us not being exclusive anymore. To me it felt like we were in a relationship because the lines were so blurry. Just being in each other's presence felt like being together, even though we didn't have a title. Throughout May I reminded him that we were taking time apart to heal, and that he could make the gesture to make our relationship official. He mentioned that he had bought a ring and returned it, and I had to coax him into admitting that he had planned to get a ring. Anyway, I brought up the official title, and he told me I was making it unnatural for him to make the gesture, and that it's not the end of the world. He didn't speak to me for two days after then flaked on a dinner date where he didn't mention the plans, and I was waiting for his initiation that whole day. He constantly did this, ignoring me for multiple days at a time. Previously, at some point within that month, I expressed loving him, but I felt like he didn't love me at all. I didn't talk to him for five days. On June 1, an old friend liked my story about going out for a motorcycle ride and asked him if he was out. He said he would be back up soon, then, I asked him if he could take me on a ride as a passenger. Then I went on a cottage trip, and a guy friend spanked me and changed in the same room, but I requested the lights were kept off, buttered my legs and washed my feet, as dares. He also would pick me up and piggyback me, but I only let that happen when I expressed new boundaries surrounding loyalty. It happened when I thought we were done. After we didn't talk I came to his house and expressed my hurt to him about everything on June 4. We had a huge fight where he told me, if this is a relationship I don't want it, and, do you feel neglected, I'll show you neglect, and I also stated, then we're not together, he just said okay. I asked him if he was okay with losing me. He also told me I don't have to stick around if I don't want to. He also told me, if you're so disgusted by me, why do you keep talking to me? I don't remember what he said, but in the past, he said stuff like he'd be okay with it if he lost me. As I cried in his mom's arms, he was smoking weed in the garage. Then, when he was supposed to take me home, accompanying me in his motorcycle when I was on mine, he literally ditched me, turned around, and went back home halfway through. The next day after he ditched me on June 5, I had a sex with somebody else, the guy I planned to hang out with on the 1st. However, I had no intention of sleeping with him until that day, it was a fast decision. I called him eight days later. Yes, I was the one to initiate him fixing something on my bike, but then he wanted to hang out, so he initiated kissing me. I said, if you want to try again, then we have to do it right this time. That night, we were talking about a commitment where he said he would define the relationship, but I brought that up, not him. It was only cause I was asking. A few days later, we had another fight where he told me I was making it hard for him to be romantic, and I told him to get out. I went to the beach with my friend and the cottage guy a few days later. The cottage guy picked me up again and carried me and put his hands on my butt, but I let it happen, even though I wasn't sure if I was comfortable with it. Basically, he had told me he would define the relationship, and he only said that because I asked, but then complained I was making it hard for him to be romantic. So I felt like he didn't want me. He didn't make it official with me like I wanted, so I kept the door open, but on his end, I feel like he thought I was being loyal, and key point on May 27, before interacting with anyone else, I said I potentially wouldn't be exclusive to him anymore due to the consequences of him not committing to me, and there weren't any more conversations after that about being exclusive again. Also, for more context, since the beginning, he has said, what's the rush to get into making it official, and he feels pressured by me. 
Right before I told him I may not be exclusive to him, he told me that he feels like I'm putting a gun to his head to do it, that I'm making it unnatural for him, asking, why does it have to be so hard? Saying that I was making him out to be a bad person, and that I was calling him, crying about it. I had sent him a slew of messages about my feelings, including the boundary about exclusivity, and all he said was, I'm sorry. He hadn't spoken to me for a few days, and he had forgotten he was supposed to take me out on a date before he messaged I'm sorry. After that, the cottage happened, and then I spoke to him six days later, and that's when the fight on June 4 happened. He had also said to me that day, that, if he makes it official, I'll look for problems. Also, after the conversation about exclusivity, he never contested that, acknowledged that, or even had a conversation afterward to restore that. In May, we never had a conversation saying that we were back together, even in mid-June, when I saw him again, we were hanging out, with simply me asking for clarity on a commitment. We didn't say we were back together at that moment, or agree on exclusivity. Did I cheat on him? Since we were technically trying to make things work during May and June, but weren't officially together. Because I initiated speaking to him after having sex with someone else. He knew we had split for the third time but spent time together, but he had told me he cared if I spoke to other guys before. But then afterward, I told him most likely I wouldn't be exclusive to him anymore because of the lack of a title. He said I was deceitful manipulative, and a cheater. But all I wanted was commitment and love, reciprocated emotional support, and feelings. At that time, I genuinely believed I was doing everything I could to maintain this relationship. I hoped that my patience and tolerance would be rewarded with lasting love and a solid commitment. But I was wrong. What I received in return was ambiguity, clear or implied rejection, and even instances of being abandoned without explanation. This made me question whether I was respecting myself by continuing to pursue someone who wasn't willing to meet my basic desires in a relationship. In the brief period after I decided to sleep with someone else, I felt a strange sense of freedom, but it was quickly replaced by guilt and confusion. As the days passed, the weight of my decision to sleep with someone else began to bear down on me more heavily. At first, it felt like a rebellious act a way to reclaim some semblance of control over a situation that had left me feeling powerless for so long. But the initial sense of liberation quickly faded, replaced by an overwhelming sense of guilt and self-doubt. I found myself replaying every moment of the last few months in my mind, trying to make sense of where things had gone wrong and what I could have done anything differently to salvage what we had. 